Chris McCullough, Faber Castell, Derwent, Holbein, Karen Dash and more. Today, my goal is to take some of the guesswork out of choosing pencils by putting 26 popular colored pencil sets to the test so that you can find the set that's right for you. As a coloring book artist, I get asked all the time about what the best coloring pencils are for beginners or for adult coloring books or the best quality if budget wasn't a concern. So I decided it was time to find out definitively once and for all. I've been researching and shopping online for months to track down the best quality, most expensive, most affordable and most highly recommended wax and oil colored pencil brands available. I've ended up with 26 different sets of pencils that I'll be comparing in this video, including some of the most sought after brands and the best quality pencils in the world. When it comes to choosing pencils, a lot comes down to preference, but there are a few things in particular that I was looking for in this testing. I looked at how vibrant the colors were. While you won't always want crazy bright colors on every picture, I think it's important to be able to achieve different levels of saturation. I looked at how soft or hard the cores were. Softer cores are great for blending, but are often brittle and prone to breakage. Hard cores are better for keeping a sharp point and fine details. Both are considerations when choosing the right pencils for your artwork. Easy blending was also an important feature for me because blending can be one of the most enjoyable parts of drawing and coloring with colored pencils, but it can also be one of the most frustrating things to learn as a beginner if you're using the wrong pencils. As you get more advanced, you can blend with almost any pencils, but for beginners, it's better to choose a set of pencils that are softer to help with the blending process, like I showed you in my last video, where I use just my Prismacolor pencils to create this rainbow gradient. I also looked at price because some of the best quality pencils aren't necessarily the most expensive. I won't be talking much about pricing in this video, but I've included a full breakdown of pricing of every single set of pencils in the detailed review on my website at the link in the description below. I also compared set sizes, performance on dark paper, color ranges, and which brands were available to buy as open stock, all of which I've detailed on my website. So as I find and test more brands, I will be including them in the full detail comparison at that link that you can access by clicking the I at the top of the screen now or in the link in the description below. This link will include so much more than I was able to fit into this video, including a detailed table showing you the course sizes, the shapes of every pencil, their light fastness ratings, price comparisons, color ranges, and more, along with all the links that you can use to find your favorite sets online to buy. I will be updating that website as I test more pencils, so it's definitely one worth bookmarking, sharing, and saving for future reference. I've grouped these pencils today somewhat to keep similar pencils together in the comparison on the website, but otherwise they are in no particular order. So let's start off with the range from Derwent. Derwent Artist Pencils. These pencils belong to my mum who bought them for us as kids over 20 years ago. And I recently found them again when going through her art supplies and I definitely underestimated them. I always thought they were a beginner pencil, but they have really good colors and blend quite well. The casing felt a little rough in my sharpener, but they didn't break. The pencils themselves are nice to use, quite smooth, easy to blend, and they hold a sharp point really well. They aren't that soft buttery core like some of the other pencils I've become used to, but that doesn't seem to affect their ability to blend or their vibrancy. They still perform great on each of the different papers I've tried, including the black paper. Personally, I particularly like their results on the Bristol vellum and colored pencil papers. I think mum would be very happy to know that her set of pencils are about to get a second life because I'll be definitely using these again. Even though I love my Prisma colors, these will be great for those areas where I want a firmer pencil or need a sharper point without losing the bright colors. Derwent Colorsoft Pencils. The Derwent Colorsoft Pencils are wax-based, artist quality pencils. They are easier to blend than the artist range and are comparable to Prismacolor Premier Pencils in a lot of ways, except they come at a higher price. 
They are really easy to blend, layer and mix colors. The colors are vibrant and they feel firm but smooth. Not as waxy as Prismacolor, which can be a good thing depending on your personal preference. I like how these feel and while they did lose a bit of that color vibrancy on the smooth Bristol paper, they were still quite good colors and they performed well on the toned and black papers too. They aren't the best for details because they don't keep a sharp point for long. But this is a similar trait with most of the softest wax based pencils. Derwent Studio Pencils My first impression of the Derwent Studio Pencils wasn't good. They quickly became my least favourite from the Derwent range. They aren't as easy to blend or layer and the colours are less vibrant. However, they do have a much smaller, stronger core that keeps a sharp point really well and is resistant to breakage, which makes them great for fine details. As I've been using them more, I can see a really good purpose to these and I think I will actually end up using them quite often, but not as a standalone set. I think these pencils are a great companion for the other Derwent pencil sets rather than as a set on their own. They would be great to use alongside a softer set to enhance the fine details like grass, feathers or hair that the other pencils won't do as well. In the short testing I did, I found they work particularly well on the toned paper and the smooth Bristol, but not very well at all on the cheap printer paper. So quality paper is important for a set like this. Derwent Light Fast Pencils Derwent's Light Fast Pencils are their first oil-based pencil and are very impressive. Even though they aren't wax-based, they are soft and creamy and easy to blend. My first impression is that they are really nice to use and remind me somewhat of the Caran d'Ache Luminance. All the pencils in the Derwent Light Fast range are 100% light fast. Colors will not fade at these values for up to 100 years under museum conditions. In the small 12 set I purchased, I was quite disappointed in the color range. So you'll have to purchase a larger set to get a better mix of colors or buy these pencils as open stock in addition to other pencil sets to make up a bigger range of colors because buying the full set of light fast pencils is quite expensive. <laughs> these are one of the nicest pencils I've come across and I do think the price is justified, but it definitely puts them out of reach for many amateur artists or beginners. The good thing is they blend so well that you can make up a lot of the colors that you're missing so you can still start with a smallish set and work your way up to a larger collection over time. Faber-Castell Classic Color Pencils This is Faber-Castell's beginner set and it is a great set for kids comparable to the quality of Crayolas. But it is also a great set for beginners or amateur adult colorists on a low budget. The core is strong and holds a point well. They are firm but also smooth and they layer easily, although they aren't anything special when it comes to blending. Because they are a little bit hard to blend, it would be better to get a larger set instead of trying to mix colors from a smaller set. The colors are bright and have very good variety, but they aren't really designed for black paper. But Faber-Castell have a new answer for that, which we'll come to shortly. But first, Faber-Castell Gold Faber. These pencils feel great and are smooth to use with beautiful, bold colors. They are easy to blend and the pigments are vibrant, even on the black. I found it was really easy to layer and mix colors together, meaning you don't need a big set to produce great results with these pencils. The cores are strong and break resistant and these are very high quality. They are not waxy and still keep a sharp point fairly well. I think these are a great overall pencil and would be suitable for any skill level, so they are definitely one I would consider trying, either as open stock or in a small set if you're wanting to test out a few different brands for yourself. They even worked on the black paper, much like our next pencil. Faber-Castell Black Edition These pencils weren't in my original list, but I stumbled across them at the last minute and couldn't resist. They are advertised as super soft lead for great effects on colored and dark paper. So I was a little surprised that the 12 and 24 packs didn't include a white pencil, but I grabbed them anyway. And while the packaging makes me think these are aimed at a younger audience, I was impressed. First of all, they performed great on the black paper, as they should. They were a softer wax than the classic pencils, more opaque and much easier to blend. 
they have that lovely creamy texture that I enjoy in a wax based pencil, which does come with a bit of a wax build up too, but that's expected. Despite being aimed at children, I think these are fantastic for any colorist. The colors are vibrant and highly pigmented, and they keep a sharp point fairly well, which makes them a great pencil overall. One downside though is that these pencils don't have any numbers or names on them, which makes swatching a pain and means that buying open stock isn't going to be an option. That combined with the small color range really keeps these in the beginner category and makes them a better gift for kids. If they change that, I'd highly recommend these for adults too. Faber-Castell Polychromos Color Pencils the Faber-Castell Polychromos are the go-to pencils for many professional artists. They are one of the highest quality pencils you can buy. They are made of a combination of oil and wax and have a firm, break-resistant lead. Being a firmer oil-based pencil, they are very easy to keep sharp and are perfect for fine details, which is one of the reasons they are very popular with professional portrait artists. They take a bit more skill and practice to blend and layer than wax-based pencils, but the final results will last a lifetime. At about three times the price of Prismacolors, they're not cheap, but they are available in open stock, so you can build up your collection slowly like I have. Personally, I like to use these in a combination with other sets of pencils, so I can use the easy blending of a set like my Prismacolors and use my Polychromos for the fine details. I prefer to use the Polychromos pencils on paper with a heavier tooth, like the Strathmore colored pencil paper. I don't like how it performs as much on the smooth Bristol paper, but that's just my personal preference. Chameleon Color Tones Colored Pencils. These are a unique pencil because each pencil comes with the perfect blending color on the other end. At first, I thought this was a bit of a gimmick, good for beginners, and I didn't expect to like them, but I'll admit, after using them a bit more, they started to get addictive. <laughs> it was really fun to create blends with a single pencil. Just draw, flip, draw, flip. And I think these would be really fun pencils to use in adult coloring books, especially if you're coloring something like mandalas or patterns where you're just wanting something relaxing or mindless with bright colors and quick blending that will always look good. In terms of their actual performance, they are made of a mix of wax and oil and are highly pigmented, so the colors are bright and they blend really well. They have a buttery smooth texture and I didn't experience any wax buildup when using them. They are advertised as break resistant and have quite a thick core. In my experience, they held a sharp point really well despite their large size and didn't break once during my tests. And while I haven't mentioned packaging throughout these reviews, this packaging is so unique and well thought out that it's worth showing you as it flips perfectly into a pencil stand with click and pencil holders and color swatches. I was really impressed. And while I don't think these are the right choice for professional artists, they are great for adult coloring or for some quick fun art with easy color choices. Castle Arts Premium Colored Pencils. If you remember back to my previous video, my first impression of these pencils wasn't great. The packaging had a strong smell, although it faded pretty quickly and they don't smell anymore. The pencils themselves are great and have a smooth wax texture with a buttery core, making them easy to blend. They keep a fairly sharp point compared to other blending pencils and have pretty good vibrancy. They didn't perform as well on the toned or dark paper, and when I tested them further, I found that personally, I got the most enjoyment using them on the colored pencil paper with the medium surface. They still performed well and had vibrant colors on the simple printed paper and coloring book paper, making them a great choice for adult coloring, but not necessarily for professional artists. Black Widow Monarch Pencils. The Black Widow pencils are a very soft, buttery, wax-based pencil with vibrant colors that blend beautifully. They are not quite as opaque or smooth as other similar brands, but are still a good quality wax-based pencil for adult coloring or amateur artists, and I don't think you'll be disappointed. Black Widow pencils come in multiple color ranges that you collect, rather than in a big set like most of the other pencil brands. The Monarch set I'm using have a great range of unique pastels, which means they are not great as a standalone set, but make a great addition to an existing set of pencils, especially if you own the other Black Widow ranges. 
Crayola Signature Blend and Shade Coloured Pencils. This is Crayola's signature range of coloured pencils. They are significantly better than the kit set of Crayolas with a wax-based, soft, buttery core, beautiful colours and lots of pigment. They are really easy to use and they layer well. They are comparable to the Prisma colours and were included along with the Black Widows and the Castle Art pencils in my recent video I just mentioned looking at affordable alternatives to Prisma colour, where all three brands performed quite well. I'll pop a link at the top of the screen if you'd like to check out that comparison. But with the Crayola Signature, I struggled with breakage a lot with both my Staedtler and my brand new Faber-Castell sharpeners. The wooden casing on one of my pencils in particular kept splintering in my sharpeners and damaging the core. I feel like this is a huge disappointment because these perform really well otherwise. Crayola Coloured Pencils these Crayolas are some of the cheapest pencils you can buy without losing out on quality completely. They are definitely not artist grade pencils, but they can still produce beautiful results. Compared to the other pencils we are testing today, the colors aren't as bright and they take a lot more work to blend together, but they do hold a sharp point well and they have a huge range of colors available at a very affordable price. Better quality paper makes a huge difference with beginner pencils like the Crayolas. They work surprisingly well on the toned paper. In fact, I wish I had used this paper in my previous video when I was trying to blend them together in this sunset gradient. It would have produced a much better end result with less effort. Marco Ruffin Fine Art. The Marco Ruffin are another great option if you're trying to keep your budget low. They didn't perform well in my previous test on the Bristol Smooth Paper, so I tried some different papers today and was both surprised and impressed at how much better they performed with the right paper. On the Smooth Bristol and the cheaper papers, they really lacked the vibrancy that I'm looking for in coloured pencils. The colours weren't as bright and they didn't allow me to build up as many layers as some of the other brands, but they were still a good pencil, especially when you compare their price against all of the other pencils I'm testing today. But when using the better quality paper like the Bristol Vellum or the Canson Drawing Paper with the exception of the Bristol Smooth Paper which didn't really work at all, the colours really pop and these pencils blend far easier, making them a steal at their low price. They feel good to hold and the leads are harder so they hold a sharp point really well. I think they are a great set for beginners or artists on a budget, although I do think their blending and color vibrancy lets them down a little bit overall, so choosing the right paper is definitely key when using these pencils. Koh Noor Polycolor Artist Colored Pencil. Did I say that right? <laughs> I hadn't really heard of these much at all, so I didn't know what to expect. They felt nice and smooth to use and kept a sharp point really well. The core was firm, so they are probably better for details than for blending. The colors weren't as vibrant as many of the other pencils I've tried, and they didn't blend as easily as most. But what surprised me is that they seem to perform better on the cheap printer paper and the coloring book paper than on any of the artist papers I tried. They blended a little easier and the colors were noticeably brighter. So in a strange way, that makes these a good set for a beginner if you're looking for that harder core, maybe to complement a softer set that doesn't do details as well, in your adult coloring pages. And if I'm going to be really picky here, I've just noticed that they have two sets of numbers on each pencil. So I'm not sure what the difference is, but I do think it's a bad idea having the name of each color so close to the top of the pencil as it will disappear as the pencil gets shorter. So hopefully this other number at the bottom will still be useful in identifying each color separately. Fantasia colored pencils. My first experience with the Fantasia colored pencils was in my previous video where I compared them against my Prismacolor pencils and the colors weren't vibrant at all. After some more experimenting, I've noticed that they perform quite different on different paper. The smooth Bristol paper and the cheap printer paper both lost a lot of vibrancy, while the similar coloring book paper actually had the most vibrant colors of all. These pencils are not bad and they have a lot of good reviews online. They hold a sharp point well and are smooth and consistent to use, but they take a lot of effort to blend and don't allow many layers of color, so it's hard to mix colors, which is frustrating with only 36 colors available. 
Personally, I'm not a big fan, but they can still produce some great results with the right paper. Quick side note, apparently these also work on wood. Now I've seen this mentioned with a few other pencils. Is this a thing? Do all pencils work on wood or is this a special feature? So fun fact, it turns out that pretty much every pencil ever works on wood. So it's not a special feature of any particular brand, but it does give me some ideas for some future fun projects. Blick Studio Artist Colored Pencils. The Blick Studio Artist pencils really surprised me. They were nice to use, simple but smooth, with a wax core that wasn't too soft and buttery, but still blended quite well. They performed equally well on the different papers I tried, although the colors weren't quite as vibrant on the smooth Bristol and the toned paper, and they don't do well on black paper. These pencils were very easy to use, and other than some crumbs on the paper, I actually really enjoyed them. Color Blend by Spectrum Noir. I was really excited to see that Spectrum Noir has brought out a line of pencils, but I think they've got some improvements to make before really stacking up to the other pencils I've tested today. They come in different color ranges that you collect rather than in small, medium or large sets. So I've purchased the floral color set that mostly includes pinks and some analogous colors either side. These are easy to blend and have a buttery wax-based core, although they didn't feel as nice and smooth as some of the other brands I've used today. The colors are vibrant, although they lose a lot of impact on the toned paper and didn't really work well at all on the black paper, which is fine if you're planning to use them in coloring books. Unfortunately, I also had a lot of pencil breakage with this particular set. Three out of my 24 pencils were completely crumbled in the core and couldn't be sharpened to a point at all with either of my brand new sharpeners. When this happens with so many pencils in a small set, I recommend writing to the company to see if they will replace the pencils because it shouldn't be this common to experience breakage in a brand new set. So I'll do that and report back to you in my blog post to let you know what Spectrum Noir said about this breakage. And even though I purchased the floral set and expected a lot of pinks, there were quite a few colors that were almost the same. So a bit more variety would have been nice for such a big set of 24 pencils. Overall, these are not a bad set for beginners or for adult coloring and are quite affordable, but not a set I expect to use again personally. Staedtler Ergosoft Colored Pencils. These pencils are smooth and blend well without the buttery or waxy texture that other pencils have. They are quite thin, but keep a sharp point really well and have a very strong core that's break resistant. The colors are very bright, but not as heavily pigmented as some of the other brands I'm comparing them with today. They also work very well on the black paper. The pencils are triangular shaped and don't have any color names or numbers on them, which leads me to think that these are aimed at kids or beginners rather than professional artists. They come in a limited range of colors and don't allow much buildup of layers, but overall they perform pretty well. I think that these would be fantastic pencils for kids and even great for adult beginners or hobbyists, but I don't think they are suited to experienced artists when there are so many other brands available. Prismacolor Premier Soft Core Colored Pencils. After trying so many pencils, I still find myself coming back to these. These pencils are popular because of their extremely soft wax-based core that is smooth and buttery to lay down, which feels great to use and is easy to blend. The colors are vibrant and work on any type of paper without losing opacity. They are even bright on the black paper and the white pencil is one of the best available. These pencils are used by many professional artists because they produce such beautiful results, but they are also very easy for beginners to use. They do come with a few downsides, including the wax buildup and wax bloom that it can appear over time and the breakage that often happens with the soft cores. They don't keep a sharp point well, which can be a deal breaker for some artists. For others, the best workaround is to use these alongside another brand that can handle those details like the Faber-Castell Polychromos, so you get the benefits of the blending of the Prismacolors and the fine details of the Polychromos. Together, they make a great team. 
These pencils aren't the best pencils out there, but they are one of the most affordable artist grade options available. And any pencils that I personally would rate higher come with a much higher price tag as well. After all this, I think I'll still be using my Prismacolors more than most of these other pencils. They are no longer my absolute favorite, but they come close. Arteza Premium Colored Pencils. I bought the Arteza Premium Colored Pencils before realizing that they actually offer two different sets. And I probably should have bought the Expert set for this comparison, but I've been assured that the only difference apparently is the shape. These are triangular rather than round, but otherwise they perform pretty much the same. The Premium set only comes in this set of 48, but the Expert set offers more color choices and bigger sets, which is what I would buy if I were to buy these again. These are an impressive wax-based pencil that really surprised me. They have a soft buttery core that's smooth but a little firmer than many of the other wax-based pencils we've tried. This means they keep a sharper point but still perform beautifully when it comes to blending and layering. These didn't perform great on the black paper but otherwise they are a great pencil for beginners and hobbyists and are very enjoyable to use. Their range of bright colors makes them great for adult coloring, but probably not for professional portraits. But I will definitely be using these again. Before we move on to our next set of pencils, please take three seconds to press that like button below if you found this video helpful so far, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more from me in the future. Lyra Rembrandt Polycolor. These are quite a thin oil-based pencil and are very nice to hold. They are surprisingly light, but seem to have a strong, firm core. They feel really nice to use and lay down really smoothly. They hold a sharp point and blend really well, which are two features that not many other pencils seem to be able to do at the same time. A few of the pencils were slightly scratchy on the tone paper, but otherwise they seem to work beautifully and keep their vibrant colors on every other paper, my favorite being the Bristol vellum paper. They seem to allow me to build up quite a few layers, which is great for blending and mixing colors. Being oil-based, there's no wax buildup on these, but I am finding they are leaving some crumbs on the paper when I use a lot of pressure, but honestly, that's easy to fix with a brush on hand. It's just something to keep in mind. I can definitely see myself using these pencils again, and the only reason I wouldn't is because I've only got a small range of colors here that I bought individually. I would definitely recommend them as a good oil-based set for any skill level. Cretacolor Mega Colored Pencils. The Cretacolor Mega Colored Pencils are huge and take a little getting used to. They have an extra thick core and look like something I'd expect from a kid's pencil, but, they are definitely not the quality of a kid's pencil. They are highly pigmented, super vibrant, and really easy to blend, and they feel amazing. Almost like using pastels or paints. <laughs> they work really well on every kind of paper I tried, and the colors are amazing. They are really good quality, and every color is highly light fast, although there are only 36 colors currently available. Because they are so big, they aren't great for details. Instead, I think these are great for filling large areas like backgrounds. So I wouldn't buy them as your first or only set of pencils. Instead, use them to complement a set you already have. You'll also need a bigger sharpener. These just fit into the jumbo side of my Faber-Castell sharpener I've been using. And maybe buy a few as open stock like I have because they are quite unique and probably won't be for everyone. Personally, I will definitely be using these again. Karen Dash Luminance. If you've watched my previous video, you'll know that I have been using the Karen Dash Luminance pencils for a short time now, and I love them. They are made of a mix of wax and oil and are one of the highest quality pencils available. I've tried a lot of pencils today and wasn't sure if I'd leave with a new favorite, but at this point, I still feel very at home with the Luminance. They aren't a cheap pencil. In fact, I wouldn't recommend buying these as a hobby pencil for coloring books. I think these are a great pencil to work your way up to as you grow your skills and your collection, even if you start by just buying a few pencils at a time. They have thick, vibrant colors with a heavy pigment and a smooth, buttery texture. 
They aren't too soft for me personally, unlike some of the cheaper wax pencils, and you can build and layer upon layer, even beyond burnishing, allowing you to have really good control over your colors and your blending. The colors work great on almost any paper, although personally, I really liked them on the smooth Bristol more than the colored pencil paper with the extra tooth. When I first bought these, I considered them to be a mix between my Prismacolors and the Polychromos. They were easy to blend like the Prismacolors, but with the stronger core like the Polychromos. They don't quite hold a point as well as the Polychromos, but I found them to be pretty good. They are 100% light fast and the small color range is growing with 100 pencils now available at the time of this video. If you've got the money to spend, I don't think you'll be disappointed with these pencils. Uni Posca colored pencils. I only bought a few of the Uni Posca colored pencils in open stock, but I really like these pencils. The core is a mix of oil and wax and can apparently be used on paper, wood, glass, stone, plastic, or metal. So it's no surprise that they performed great on the black paper. In fact, they were one of the most vibrant and pigmented pencils I tried today. I really love the smooth and creamy texture of these pencils. They are easy to blend and allow a lot of layering even after burnishing. So it's easy to adjust colors and create really smooth blends. They aren't cheap and they can be hard to find. In fact, they released 5,000 units of an exclusive 240 color set for their 50th anniversary years ago. But other than that, I can only find sets of up to 100 and even those are hard to find, which seems to be a trend with Japanese pencils like these. Like the last pencil on my list today, the famous Holbeans. Holbein Artist Colored Pencils. Okay, the whole beans, whole beans, whole beans. I don't know how to say that. Just like the Uni Posca pencils, these are from Japan and were quite hard to find online. Out of all the pencils I bought, these were the most expensive and I ended up purchasing a few pencils in open stock instead of a set. They are made of a mixture of wax, fat and oil and have a color range unlike almost any other brand with a huge range of pastels and some really bright neons. They are incredibly easy to blend and layer and have a nice buttery smooth texture like some of the other pencils we've used today. I'm going to be completely honest, I expected to be blown away by these pencils and instead I didn't find any reason why they should be so much more expensive than the other pencils I've tested today. I did a little more research after my test to see if maybe I'd chosen the wrong colors or made a mistake in my order somehow because people rave about these pencils online like they are the best in the world. But I'll be honest, I don't think I can give an amazing review of these pencils without trying more of them. Because in my experience with the few pencils I bought, they were a little bit underwhelming compared to what everybody tells me. And at the same time, I think that's partly my own fault. First, the white pencil was a really weird sticky consistency. I didn't like how it felt and I found it really hard to blend with any of the other pencils. It was, however, by far the most opaque white pencil out of any of the white pencils tested today. As it turns out, they actually offered two different white pencils and I had ordered the most opaque one, which explains why the consistency was so strange and not necessarily a bad thing if you know what you're getting. In fact, all the pencil colors were crazy bright, even on the black. Just look at the yellow, wow. But the pigment and texture was so inconsistent between pencils. Some felt waxier than others, some felt oilier than others, others. And again, this was my own mistake. It turns out that two of the colors that I purchased are luminous, which means they are part of the neon range, which may explain why the consistency is so different to the other pencils. So when I take this into consideration, I can see why I was confused and that I need to give the Holbeins another go with a bigger range of colors to try. But honestly, after all this, I don't think I'll be buying any more pencils for a while. So that review might have to wait. 
If you've been lucky enough to try them for yourself or if you've had a similar or different experience with any of the pencils I've tried today, I'd love to hear what you thought. So please let me know in the comments below if you have tried the Hobbins for yourself, what you thought, if you were underwhelmed, if you thought they were amazing, or if you have tried any of these other pencils. Well, that was an overload of information. So it's a good thing. It's all in a handy written format waiting for you in the description below. Even as I publish this video today, I have already discovered more pencils that I have missed and it would be impossible to review them all. But with 27 sets covered in this video already, I am confident that you will find the right pencils for you among some of the brands that I have discovered today. But as I find and test more brands, I will be including them in the full detail comparison on my website that you can access in the description. This link will include so much more than I was able to fit in this video, including the light fastness ratings, price comparisons, color ranges, availability of open stock, and where to buy all the pencils we've talked about. I've created a handy chart with ratings of all the features we've talked about and I'll keep updating this as I find out more information and add more pencils to my collection. You don't need any more pencils. <laughs> so it's definitely one worth bookmarking, sharing and saving for future reference. In my next video, I'm going to take everything we've looked at today and tell you which are my favorites. I'll tell you my top recommendations for beginners, for professional artists, for every skill level and every budget. I'll tell you which pencils have the biggest color variety and which are the best for skin tones. So if you haven't already, please press the subscribe button below and turn on your notifications so you'll be notified about all my new videos on colored pencils, adult coloring and getting creative in your everyday life. It is important to note that I haven't used some of these pencils for very long. So while I've tried to be incredibly thorough, I can't possibly test everything. And my opinions are based on a very short experience with some of these brands. So if you've tried some of these brands for yourself, I encourage you to share your own experiences in the comments. And if you are hoping to see more of these pencils in action today, you don't have to leave disappointed because I have gathered some fantastic pencil video reviews from all over YouTube into a single playlist for you that you can access right here to see some of these pencils close up. So quickly save that link below in the description or open it up in another window, then come back and enjoy one of these next videos that I have personally selected for you to help you on your pencil journey.